Have you got Craig on the go? Now recording. Now recording. There he, sounds, he is. He sounds so posh, doesn't he? He sounds so posh. He's. We need to get him to do our like intro. Yes, we do. We definitely need something along those lines because he sounds like he's from like private school or something like this, and he really mm-hmm. does bring like a degree of highbrow that I think the podcast is lacking. Yeah, we really need something like that. Mm. And it's such a shame because no one hears him apart from us. Yeah. Now recording. (laughs) We're the only ones that know of his existence. Hey guys, welcome to Wrestling Escape Pod. Nearly said Wrestling Days, but welcome to the Wrestling Escape Pod. I am Wrestling Days and I am joined by the Boston boy himself, Tommy Toy Travels. Shout out to you, Tommy. I'm back. Yes. And, Shout out to me. And and is the world looking all bright and rosy? Because those are some beautiful glasses. Yeah, they're my they're my new uh, quarantine glasses, which is uh, they're fake. It's just my everyday glasses, but with a fake lens cover. Okay, why why have you gone for that lens cover? Uh well, well, days. I don't want to surprise you too much. Oh, breaking news. Breaking news. Oh, I lied. I lied. <laughs> the reason why I got them yeah. is because it blocks blue light and I'm a gamer. It, hang, hang on, what? Is that true? What do you mean it blocks blue that light? That I'm a gamer? It's very true. Uh, hang on, but yeah, but what's the problem with blue light? What's your issue with blue light? Apparently it keeps you up at night. So you have to wear them at night whilst you're... No, I don't you, have to. But you close your eyes. So how's the blue light getting at you? Is this a conspiracy? Are you sleeping oh, in like a tinfoil hat or something? What's going absolutely. on? Absolutely. Well, when I got the glasses, they gave me a bunch of... Um, oh, okay. Uh, there's, there's these, which is blue light. Then there's, I don't know if it come across, but 3D. So whenever the movie's open, I'll just put this over and watch 3D movies. Wow. So you don't, you don't need like the, cin- the cinema. You just literally change your own. Yep. Wow. That is, you're like a Boy Scout. You're ready for any situation. I really am. Yeah. I'm still completely, yeah. like, I can't get my head around the blue light thing. I've got no idea what you're going on about. Like, that has blown my mind. Um, it's future tech. It is future you're in tech. America. It is? Yeah. It's a, it's an American thing. We have too many blue lights here. In wow. the UK, you have uh, different lights, probably. Uh, wow. A lot of people say we haven't got enough blue lights. That's our problem over here. But um, I, it's always interesting for me because I always feel like America is, is you know, it's, it's a bigger country. Um, it's a great country, of course. And I, and I think you guys obviously are at the cutting edge of technology. So I would maybe expect to be wearing those glasses in about 10 years time myself. So uh, okay. it's this is very, very interesting for me to see this future tech that's kind of coming through. It's kind of like if we were doing this podcast like 50 odd years ago, you'd be sat there with like a television set and I'd be like, what is that? What is that? You're not wrong. Mm. Yeah, because I really do feel that those glasses are on par with the television set. They're going to be that revolutionary. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's going to have Just a... having yellow tint is as revolutionary <laughs> yeah. as the, the TV. Do you know what though? Could you imagine if it had like you know data that was kind of coming in? Didn't did you ever hear about Google Glasses? Did, weren't they? Did they do that kind of a thing? I once played board games at like some board game night with some guy with Google Glasses, and it freaked me out because like the whole time he was probably recording me. Yeah, I never. What could you actually do with Google Glasses? Did you actually? You did you try them on? No, I didn't ask. Oh, okay. Oh, I definitely would have asked. I definitely would have asked. I. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I was. I was waiting for them, but I don't think they're coming anymore, are they? I. Because no. uh, I don't know what they did. They record. This is kind of welcome to the wrestling escape pod, everyone. <laughs> it's a. Oh. <laughs> This, this is why we probably should have a little chat before we start recording, because now yeah. we're just going off into like places that we probably shouldn't be going. Now, can we yeah. let, hang on? Let's let's finish this conversation. Do you know what Google Glasses actually did? 
recorded, took pictures. I don't know if they actually did anything else, but they were like a thousand dollars or in that range. So, yeah, I mean, I was under the impression that it actually put data onto the lens so that you could obviously look through the glasses but also if you looked in the corner you could actually get information no I, 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 I could be wrong all I'm saying is that if you was playing board games with a guy that was wearing those glasses he might not have been filming you he might have been cheating whoa how about how about them apples how about them apples and, and do you know what, Tommy? I should imagine that you're very angry right now after hearing that news. And I should imagine that you will want payback. You're going to want some payback. That's what you're going to want. And that is exactly what you're going to get on this podcast. Welcome, everyone, to the Wrestling Escape Pod. This is all about payback. And uh, this is a pay-per-view that's been around since 2013. Um, And obviously we're doing this episode because it's coming back in 2020. And uh, it's actually happening not that far away at the time of recording this. It's going to be the week after SummerSlam. So it's very, very strange. Very strange. Apparently, I I read just earlier today that uh, this is an experiment them doing payback the week after SummerSlam is an experiment. Um, Dave Meltzer saying that they must have some kind of red hot angle. There must be some coming out of SummerSlam that cannot wait. Um, so they're just going to go from one weekend having SummerSlam and then the next weekend payback. But that is so unusual. And, and then that means you've got to wait a long, long time till the next pay-per-view. So it's all... It's all very, very strange. But um, I've got a few facts, figures, bits of information, key matches. There's loads of big moments that's happened at Payback. So plenty of stuff for us to go through. Um, but was there anything that like you wanted to kind of kick us off with at all? Anything that you wanted to raise up, as you say? Just a couple things uh, that it took place of the defunct No Way Out pay-per-view, which is also a Foo Fighters song for those of you that listen to music. Also, I want to point out that uh, while I was making dinner today, I realized that in wrestling storylines, there are a few reasons for matches. One is to get payback. One is uh, because you were booked. One is to see who's the better wrestler. Uh Uh, One is to i i don't know i was trying to think of the other because i was like dude every wrestling match is a payback but then i was like no no it's not Mm. but i don't think wwe booked is going to work as well as a pay-per-view name is it (laughs) think of that card though wwe contractually obliged how about that (laughs) Yeah, I mean, yeah. you can you can see why they went with payback, but uh, yeah, no, it's true. I mean, it, most most uh, matches are because there's uh, some kind of payback that's needed, or uh, we're building up to come some kind of a grudge. And uh, it's been some really good matches that's taken place uh, over the years at uh, payback. Let's go. Let's go back to 2013. Let's go back to that first one. Um, this very much has always been a B show. It's never been a show that's kind of set the world on fire, if you will. They've tried lots of different things to raise it up, but um, it's very much a B-show. It's nowhere near the level of SummerSlam, WrestleMania, Royal Rumble, anything like that. So it's very much a B-show. As you said, you know, started in 2013, replaced No Way Out. That first show got 186,000 buys. But I've got to tell you, that 2013 show is regarded as like one of the kind of lost classic pay-per-views because it was the first payback. But not only that, there were some really, really good matches that took place in 2013. And uh, it also featured like Curtis Axel winning the Intercontinental Championship uh, on Father's Day. How cool is that? So Father's, Father's Day, of course, Curtis Axel's dad is Mr. Perfect. 
So Mm -hmm. him winning it on Father's Day is such a nice moment. Uh, I think it was in 2013 as well at Payback that AJ Lee first became a champion as well. So she managed to uh, achieve that. Uh, Plus also we got an incredible match between CM Punk and Chris Jericho. Um, That match would get four and a half stars by Dave Meltzer. Um, And a lot of reviews are saying um, that this was just a really solid show from top to bottom. There wasn't really anything that was a disaster. And uh, it's kind of one of those lost classic pay-per-views that's really worth a watch. Um, I even clicked on an article as I was researching this that was talking about the 10 best pay-per-views from the uh, 2010 to 2020 period, that 10-year period. And this made it. Payback 2013 made it onto that list alongside WrestleManias and SummerSlams and things like that. So, uh, fun fact, the top one was Money in the Bank 2011, the John Cena, CM Punk, absolutely brilliant pay-per-view that is. But uh, Payback 2013 did make it. Uh, Was there, like, um, any key matches that you wanted to raise up or highlight or... I didn't watch this one. This was before I started watching. So a lot of those storylines were uh, fact when I started watching because I I started after uh, SummerSlam 2013. So I never knew that's where Curtis got the championship. That's Mm -hmm. where AJ Lee got the championship. As a first time watcher, I was... I was convinced AJ was the champ for much longer than that, but it's really interesting to see that that was where it happened. Yeah, I think what's really interesting about AJ is that she has always had such confidence and she's always come across as such a commanding figure and she did so much because she was with Daniel and she was hanging out with Big E and Dolph and, you know, she was doing like an authority role and there was like loads of stuff. She was involved in loads of different things. But actually, her time with the company wasn't like 10 years or anything like this. It was all kind of crammed into quite a short space of time. Um, I think she came through like NXT. She was on like the female uh, season where it was all women. Um, and I'm sure she came through that. Uh, so she she really hadn't been around that long. Um, and uh, of course, you know, she wouldn't sadly stick around that long. Uh, she would go on to achieve great things, um, make such an impact. But, yeah, it is kind of crazy to think that, uh, yeah, this is like the first time that she's picking up the title. Um, but throughout the history of Payback, though, not just 2013, was there um, like a, a match at all? Because um, obviously I know you was watching around this time, Payback 2014, 2015. The one that, that might stick out, Shield versus Evolution, Blue Tista. You gotta talk about Blue Tista, man. Yeah, it was an incredible outfit. It mm. didn't match any of his teammates, but he looked cool. He looked like a million bucks. Yep. They made a figure of it. Yeah. And it's awesome. Did you... I think the match was good. Yeah, the match uh, was good, yeah. I that was the first payback I watched, maybe even the last. I don't I don't know. Mm. Uh but I I I don't remember hating any of the matches, uh, to be fairly honest with you. Um, but the only one that sticks out is Shield versus Evolution. Yeah, it's the big one. It's definitely the big one. Do you remember that Blue Tista figure? Yeah, mm. with the outfit. Yeah, it was really cool. They it was so weird because like the big selling point of a um, Batista figure is probably the, all the tattoos that's and all the detail that's on the figure. Um, but this one, I seem to remember. He was the other way round in the box. So you never saw the tattoos. Uh, He had the flat cap on and he had a little waist jacket on. And uh, it was such just a weird looking little figure. They actually added a few things that he never even wore at the show. Like, I don't remember him having that flat cap or the jacket that's on the figure. I think they just put them in because they needed some accessories. Um, because obviously Batista just in blue trunks rather than like black trunks wasn't going to be enough. But there was such excitement around Blue Batista and the fact that he'd um, come out in blue trunks 
just like it was such a weird thing that was just trending at the time that it's kind of around this time we're really seeing the power of social media and uh blue teaster definitely uh, captured people's imaginations so yeah we did get shield versus evolution dave Meltzer given that four stars um and then of course the next night the shield split so just to put mm -hmm. it into perspective it was the next night on raw because Triple H came out and said there's always a plan B. And that plan B, of course, was Seth turning on his brothers. So, uh, yeah, really, really cool. Um, but as we said, loads of great matches throughout the history. Loads of uh, different matches as well. Um, we've had a three stages of hell match. Uh, this was Cena versus Ryback. Um, it only got 3.25 stars from Dave Meltzer, but this um, was a lumberjack match. So it was kind of three matches. So the first match was a lumberjack match. Then straight after that, they did a tables match. And then straight after that, it was an ambulance match, uh, which is really cool. So um, it's definitely worth a watch. And it's a really good match. I mean, even Dave Meltzer uh, gives it 3.25 but, um, yeah, that was uh, really noteworthy. Uh, also, in 2014, uh, we've got... So, this is the same show as Evolution versus uh, The Shield. We've got Bray Wyatt versus John Cena. This is a last man standing match, and it is excellent. It is so good. Meltzer gives that four and a half stars as well. So... We were singing the praises of Payback 2013 earlier, but Payback 2014 is a really good show as well. I think that the only downside with Payback 2014 is it has got a few like matches that don't quite deliver, but it's got some excellent, excellent matches as well. Yeah, I remember being pretty peeved by the, the Rusev. Just because it's like, it should have been a hoss fight. Should have been awesome. Yeah. Big E versus Rusev, two big guys. Yeah. Let them just go at each other. But it was uh, definitely Rusev dominating and continuing his streak, mm -hmm. which I, I get that storyline. But as a, a viewer, it wasn't the most exciting thing to watch. Yeah. As we said, uh, that year, very much some peaks and troughs, uh, things that really delivered maybe over delivered and uh, some things that really missed the mark uh in 2015 this is definitely worth mentioning because we actually get roman reigns versus seth rollins versus dean ambrose so all three members of the shield going up against each other but also in this match is randy orton um, so little bit disappointing that Randy Orton is involved in this because a straight up shield triple threat is something that people really wanted. Um, we kind of got that here, but uh, they added uh, Randy in the match. I think there's a really cool moment where they do the shield triple power bomb on Randy Orton during the match. Um, Seth, I believe, ends up winning the contest. Uh, obviously, he's a heel. Uh, at this point, uh, having turned basically the year before. Um, Meltzer gave that 3.75 stars, um, but really a, a significant match in the history of The Shield and the way that they would move forward with their single solo careers. Uh, in 2016, we had Kevin Owens against Sami Zayn. They always deliver incredible matches. Uh, Meltzer gave that four stars. Um, and also in 2016... Roman Reigns versus AJ Styles. That got 3.75 stars. So just just a selection. I mean, there's other great matches, um, but I just wanted to kind of highlight those ones because uh, those are regarded as uh, some of the best matches in the history of Payback. So, uh, yeah, really, really cool. I've got uh, a few other ones that aren't regarded as brilliant, but they are still big talking points. So, uh, yeah, I definitely wanted to uh, raise these up. But was there anything that you wanted to highlight before I move on to these matches? No, I genuinely feel like I only watched 2014 because I'm, I'm looking at the list of matches and it's like I was watching then. Maybe I let my network subscription last or, or, or something, but... Mm. Uh, I don't 
have any memory of any of these matches. Well, in all fairness, uh, 2014 wasn't the worst one to watch. And as we said, 2013, the year before, was really good as well. Um, but there's some matches here that you might have caught. Um, in 2017, we got the House of Horrors. That was payback that that took place on. So that is Randy Orton versus Bray Wyatt inside the... Um, is, is it an abandoned house? Um, I don't even know what the House of Horrors actually was. It was a spooky house. Do, do you remember seeing that match? I'll, t- I'll tell you, TTT inside scoop. Oh, so like it was that. around this time that was really like anti-everything dub. And I was a big fan of uh, Broken Matt Hardy and the final deletions and all that jazz. Yes. So when I saw the WWE doing this, I got, I got, I got. Pied off. No, pied off is <laughs> not the right term. Is it? Well, oh, oh, we'll take we'll make it a thing. Whoa. No, it's absolutely Whoa. Fine. Craig pieced out. Craig pieced out. Oh, hang on. People won't know who that is. Is this gonna be his debut? Uh bring him in. We we hoped that we would get him. Dude Well he just pieced. He just pieced. It's just uh, Whatever. Wow. wow, okay. Well look, breaking news. We do have an audio oh. recorder that runs at the same time, and apparently he's done one. Wasn't it? Wasn't it Discord? Wasn't it Discord that was telling us to just finish before? And now, and now the little audio recording bot called Craig has has gone. Oh, he's done. He's done with us. That's fine. I'll just take the audio from the video. Wow, brilliant. Okay, what? Yeah. There's no bringing him back. He just left. He came back and was like, I'm gone again. This this podcast sucks. Wow. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. How rude. How yeah. rude. And we was we was only singing his praises before we started recording. One of the very few things that me and Tommy said before we started recording was, it'd be really good if like people could hear Craig. Because when he first starts recording, right, the little audio bot, he goes, now recording like this. And he's really posh. He's really posh. Mm-hmm. He sounds like he's been to private school. And uh, I was like, man, we should definitely get him in on the pod. <sighs> Apparently he's like, nah, forget this. <laughs> he just forget came this. back and left again. Did he? Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't hear him with the now recording. Yeah, he's not saying it. He's, <sighs> he's probably shy. He's gone mute. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, you, you, honestly, you, you just don't know what to expect when it comes to this podcast. Yeah. yeah. Um, and everyone everyone listening to this or watching this is just going to be like, what what, what, what are is, they talking what about? What are they talking about? Well, I have done two impressions. I mean, I don't know how else I can get the message across as to what he, what he does. He records the audio in the background so that it can go on to Apple. Is it Apple Podcast? Every podcast. Every the- podcast. Yeah. Because we've still got the boys over there, haven't we? Shout out to the boys! (laughs) Uh, Well, yeah, but unfortunately you probably won't get any more episodes because our audio recorder has left us. Our silent partner has walked (laughs) away, so... Anyway, let's let's desperately try to get this back on track. Yes, so as I was saying... Uh, House of Horrors, uh, Final Deletion. So I was like big time protesting and didn't watch House of Horrors because I was like, I don't want to do a copycat episode. How was it? Uh, uh, it was rubbish. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, it, it was so bad. Dave Meltzer didn't rate it. Um, the only thing I would say is that I really, I really did like the fact that they tried to do something different. I remember watching it and being entertained, if you will. Like from a from a watching it point of view, you go right. What where are they going now? What's that room? I think there was a room where there's like dolls dangling from the ceiling. They go into like the kitchen area, and there's like a fridge that's all dirty, and the kitchen's all dirty. And I think they knock. He moves the fridge and knocks it onto the other person. And uh, I mean, they're trying to make it like spooky and scary and all this kind of stuff, but. It didn't quite land, to be honest. Um, I saw mixed responses to it, but as we said, by and large, it, it got probably more negative than positive. But there was definitely people out there that enjoyed it. And I like the fact that they tried 
to to do something and uh i can understand those people that are like big matt hardy fans getting upset because it definitely was a rip off of the final deletion but uh yeah that was still very noteworthy uh that match took place in an abandoned house apparently wwe i don't know if they bought the house or rented the house or whatever it was up for sale uh they filmed this and uh, i did see not long after that it was back on the market so you could buy this house where bray and randy had been fighting um so they i think jumped into cars and then drove to the arena to like finish the match in the arena which is a bit like what uh i don't know so yeah that took place Another noteworthy thing. Do you remember this? I can't remember the year. Vaude Villains against Enzo and Big Cass. Enzo gets thrown against the ropes, hits his head on the ropes and knocks himself out. And Enzo then crashes outside the ring and does not move. It's uh, It was kind of like a big, big talking point. So, I mean, it was a bit of a nothing match, of course. Um, perfectly fine for Dan in NXT, but main roster, it, it wasn't really doing anything. I think it even opened the show. And uh, Simon Gotch uh, hurls Enzo against the ropes. He kind of falls as he goes to them, slips, smacks his head, gets whiplash and whatever, and he is out. Um, and it's quite scary. It's quite scary because he just absolutely slumps to the outside, completely motionless. And um, you can tell that it's very, very serious and the commentators are serious. And I mean, obviously, we don't know what we've just seen. Um, completely not storyline, completely like had to go to hospital. Thankfully, everything was obviously all right. But man, that was that was moody. Um, and that that took place at Payback as well. Uh, did you ever see that? No. Maybe. 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 Um, the only other one that I had written down, noteworthy, hair versus mask, El Torito versus Hornswoggle, the mm -hmm. pre-show of 2014. This was the We L C rematch. So mm -hmm. we, I think we've spoken about that match before, haven't we? Yeah. Um, and they Mattel did figures for that as well. The the old We L C uh, set with Hornswoggle and uh, El Torito. Well, this was the rematch. I think it was a case that if El Torito won, he had to take the mask off. If mm -hmm. um, no, if Hornswoggle won, El Torito took mm -hmm. the mask off. If El Torito <laughs> yes. won. El Torito won. Yeah. He had to take off yeah. his mask. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, that would have been a, quite a journey. So, uh, yeah, if El Torito won, Hornswoggle shaved his head. If Hornwoggle, Hornswoggle won, El Torito uh, had to take his mask off. And I think it was El Torito that won. I don't know why I'm struggling talking about that match so much. It's because Craig's not here. It's because Your Craig's not here. Beast out. Yeah, that's true. And it's also because the two participants have got... Uh, two very complicated that why can't they be called bob versus john do you know what i mean like el torito versus hornswoggle mm -hmm. <sighs> it's just rude yeah. it's just rude so um yeah i mean that that that's pretty much all of the bits that i had when it came to payback there's not tons to talk about because it only started in 2013 so it ran in 2013, 2014, 15, 16, 17. Five shows is all we've ever had. And then it's coming back in 2020. And I can't even tell you any of the 2020 matches because, of course, SummerSlam is in the way. So we're not going to know until we get past SummerSlam. But um, it's very interesting that it is just the week after. I agree. Are you watching SummerSlam this year? No. Okay. Uh, <laughs> is that when is that? Is that at the time this airs? Yeah. This weekend? Yes. Sun no. it's on Sunday. No. Have have you seen the matches? Dominic. And every time I see people talking about it, I'm like, uh, it's Donovan Dijak. 
but it's not. No, it's, no, it's, it's not. Daish, it's not. I get really excited because I'd love to see him go against Seth Rollins. But wow, maybe it will. I mean, he is uh, apparently on the verge of a call up. Um, and oh, yeah, he, he, he was. It's it's kind of a, a long story, but short story is that he uh, had matches against Keith Lee, lost them. We expected him to be called up. He was seen sitting at ringside, um, being in the crowd. Um, and he's a big name to just be sat kind of in the crowd at Raw and SmackDown. They tend to only use like performance center recruits, um, and obviously he's he's a decent name. Uh, so clearly he was he was there, but they didn't do anything with him. They ended up using him in another match against Carrion Cross on NXT. He got battered um, by Carrion Cross, and it kind of felt like he was only there just to feed him to carry and cross if you will um so we're waiting yeah i mean uh we we've not seen a lot of people are saying this retribution might have something to do with uh dijakovic but i i I don't see it personally i don't see it because they're all about five foot nothing and he's uh over what six five or something so yeah yeah i uh don't think that he is going to be a part of that but we'll have to wait and see so, yeah, I am expecting him to get uh, a main roster call up pretty soon. Did you hear as well, just going a little bit off topic, but did you hear about the Thunderdome? Sign me up. Sign me up so quickly. This sounds like something that you'd find at a museum of science or something. So that being what WWE is doing, hell yeah. I remember when I was a kid, there was this room at the Museum of Science that they'd make actual uh, lightning and if that's what WWE is doing, hell yeah. The I don't know. Thunder's just the sound. Well, I don't know what they're doing, to be honest. I mean, like, I know it is a dome, right? I don't know there's going to be actual thunder. So I, I can understand there could be a bit of miscommunication here. Um, I think, uh, I don't know. I don't even know why the word thunder is involved, if I'm being honest. But uh, apparently there is a video screen dome. There is uh, drones, lasers, uh, bigger pyro, bigger end, because they've got the Amway Center now in Orlando. They've moved out of the Performance Center. So SummerSlam's going to come from there, and you can actually apply to be a virtual crowd member. And the Thunderdome is going to... So it's a structure that's going to go over the ring. It's basically a massive TV screen that's going to wrap around... And uh, this is going to allow them to have a crowd. And uh, when people make their entrances, it's going to look absolutely epic because they can take the whole thing over for like an entrance video. So there's a lot of excitement when it comes to uh, this Thunderdome. We're going to see it for the first time on SmackDown. Um, And then, of course, it'll be at SummerSlam as well. No, it will be at Payback also. So I suppose it is uh, wise that we do just give it a little mention because it, it will be at payback in 2020, because they're going to stay in the Amway for um, quite a while, good few weeks slash months. So, um, yeah, very, very interesting. At the time of recording this, the uh, applications thing hasn't opened yet for people to apply. Would you apply to be in the crowd at the SummerSlam that you've got no interest in watching? Oh, of course, yeah. Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> That would be br- I would love that. I would love. I would love it. Like where you're looking at the crowd, you've got everyone cheering, right? Everyone having a good time, and then just in the corner, Tommy reading a book, just <laughs> reading a book like this, just having a, or maybe even scooping out some rice to uh, just get things, get things ready for the weekend. A little bit too much there. Is that a bit? Yeah, that'll do. Like the, just in the car, that would be epic. That would be you've got to apply. You have got yeah. to apply. People would love to see that. The only downside is there might be a little bit too much blue light. I don't know. I've not checked. I don't know. Yeah. But you are even if that's the case, you're absolutely fine. I'm prepped. Boom. Yeah. There we go. There we go. It's always sunny in Boston. That's <laughs> Yes. That is the fact. That is the TV show waiting to uh 
to happen. Uh, the the yeah. only, the only other thing that we've not spoken about is obviously you are back, aren't you? I mean, uh, oh, yeah. I've kind of completely ignored this. That's fine. We can talk about it next week. Well, the tree is because it's dark out now, so. Yes. Yeah. Although I can see something that's down just below the window. Uh, could it be a laundry basket? Mm-hmm. It is, is a that laundry. laundry. Is that a debut? Uh, I believe so, yeah. And, and actually, it's also a slight debut for the walk in wardrobe. Oh, yeah. Or the yeah, fit, yeah. fitted wardrobe. I don't know if you can walk into it. We haven't found that out yet. I can fit in there. Okay. I wouldn't call it walk in, but I could walk in. <laughs> okay. There we go. Break in news. Uh, and uh, a laundry basket as well. I, 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 I mean, mm-hmm. like, so is this, this is your bedroom? My office. Your uh, okay. My bachelor pad. Oh, what? Is that where you entertain Svitlana or future Svitlanas? We'll see. Okay, Trying to come round and see my laundry basket. Shall we, shall we see if we can both fit into my walk-in wardrobe? Honestly, we probably could. Okay, well, there we go. Very cool. I might have to take some things out of there, but it's possible. Is it nice to be back home? No, but yes. Pros and cons. It's hot. Hotter than where you were? Yeah. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, okay. But a pro is uh i'll get back to you <laughs> okay <laughs> well you've got your laundry basket back so yes you know I mean? that is that's, true that's, that's, that's definitely a pro that's definitely I have my a laundry pro. basket i have my my air con i have the trees a lot of pros a lot of pros you are correct uh, the other pro is that you haven't cut out discord i know hasn't kicked you out granted for the first time craig has left us um yes. which is a bit of a shame but uh do you know what i mean f- very much i think this podcast is one step forward two steps back uh, very much uh, so. every, yeah every we, time, in yeah. fact we we probably should have called it that <laughs> yeah <laughs> welcome to the one step forward two steps back podcast <laughs> awesome yeah. right is there anything else that you wanted to uh raise up yeah, I just want to quickly say that uh, last night I had a dream that we went to Savers. <laughs> really want Savers? Yep. Yes. 100%. Oh, man, look at this. I'm sneaking into Triple T Dreams now. You're the man of my dreams now. Loving Confirm. this. Loving this. This is exactly where I was hoping to get to. And uh, Savers as well. So, uh, yes. yeah. absolutely. Did we have a good time? You were very impressed by yeah, their well, wares. No, I would be. I mean, that's an absolute yeah. fact. Yeah, I would be. How big is Savers? I don't need exact square footage. It's not a Walmart, no. but it's not a mom and pop store. Okay, okay. It's it's hard to picture in my mind because you, you say that they get all their stuff from people that bring stuff in. Mm-hmm. How many people bring stuff in? You know what I mean? I, it's, I, We've got charity shops. Yeah, we've got charity shops, but we haven't got anything big, if you know what I mean. Well, this, this is America. Wow, true. Yeah, true. Yeah, I, I, yeah, you're right. You're right. Everything's bigger. Everything's mm-hmm. bigger. Well, there we go. Uh, we, that means that I can add the savers picture to this uh, podcast as well, which uh, only is going to help it. make things. Yeah, we needed that. We needed that. We yep. might have lost a Craig, but we've gained a Savers picture. So, awesome guys! Uh, thanks a lot to Tommy Toy Travels. I hope uh, everyone enjoyed this quick look at the uh, Payback uh, pay per view series. Uh, we can't talk about 2020 as we said because we don't know any matches. But because it's called Payback, because it's the week after SummerSlam, I think it's fair to assume that it's going to be a, quite a few rematches. Uh, coming out of SummerSlam. So, um, yeah, I mean, I would imagine that it's going to be like Drew McIntyre uh, against Randy Orton rematch. That would be my guess. We know that Sasha and Bailey are going to be defending the tag team championships. That's the only thing that's been announced, but we don't know who against yet. So, yeah, um, should be uh, a decent, interesting show. Uh, obviously, it's in the Amway Center. 
and uh, just going to have to wait and see. But SummerSlam first. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'll have, to, I'll have to bring you up to speed with everything that goes down at SummerSlam. Uh, unless you're there in the Thunderdome with you. I'll be I'll be busy reading and doing my race. So <laughs> Awesome guys. Thanks a lot for watching and hopefully see you again next time. Bye for now.